Liberal Viewer presents. So we have a jail death crisis here in Sacramento with five deaths within a few months, and there's evidence these deaths result from a culture of apathy and callousness by the sheriff's office that runs our jail. So as someone who worked as a grassroots ACLU activist for years to get a community oversight board for our sheriff, I went to what they ended up calling the Community Review Commission and made this public comment. I'm Alan Ash. I'm chair of the Sacramento area chapter of the ACLU. This is the first meeting I've attended in person, though I've called in before. Uh, what brings me here for the first time is a deadly crisis in our jail resulting in five fatalities just since May. That you can read about in these letters from the medical experts and the class council and the May's consent decree. These letters, at least the unredacted parts, tell you the recent deaths in our jail are not a statistical anomaly, but are a symptom of a larger and long-standing cultural problem with the Sacramento Sheriff's Office, and that apathy and callousness pervade the jail. They tell you it is commonplace in the jails for custody staff to ignore people in crisis who press the emergency buttons in their cells begging for help. In short, they are telling you people are dying in our jail because the sheriff doesn't care. You were the sheriff oversight board, so I have to ask, do you care? And I say you're a sheriff oversight board as someone who personally spent four years working to get this commission created. I started with other community activists making an off agenda comment at a board of supervisors meeting in November 2017, asking for a community based sheriff oversight board with subpoena power. We lobbied for AB 1185. We held a town hall meeting on the topic in August 2019. We kept going to Board of Supervisors meetings through 2021, and every time what we said we wanted was a community-based sheriff oversight board with subpoena power. A community-based sheriff oversight board with subpoena power. That's what we thought we got, and that's what we need now. The only way to fix the deadly culture of apathy and callousness in our jail is with the transparency and accountability you can provide as a community-based sheriff oversight board with subpoena power. Find out what's been redacted from these letters. Get the surveillance and body-worn camera video that prove what it says in these letters. In other words, do your job. People's lives are depending on it. Thank you. Hmm, so I got no immediate response to my comment, even though under the California law governing these kinds of meetings called the Brown Act, the commissioners can briefly respond and put an issue on the agenda for a future meeting. The only direct response I got was over three hours later when... Commissioner John Stoller, during the commissioner comment section at the end, said this. Uh, to echo what the ACLU came to say, I really hope everyone reads these letters. There's been five custody deaths in custody deaths in three months. That is extreme. Uh, so I just want to read into the record some of the content from these letters. Uh, one, you have a letter from... Uh, experts in the Mays lawsuit. And the experts, a lot of this is redacted. And a lot of this is targeted at adult correctional health. But some of this is targeted at Sacramento Sheriff's Office and deficiencies in emergency medical care. Uh, for instance, in one of the deaths, they note that uh, the person was, it appears, if I were to guess from the part uh, that has been blacked out because they failed to black out the footnote, it appears the person has some type of cardiac arrest. Uh, that's on page two, footnote two. And that an automatic external defibrillator was brought to the scene, but no one used it. And that just seems incomprehensible to me for law enforcement to be there and not use it. They continue that the deputy found the patient minimally responsive, responsive and the deputy went to another floor to find a nurse and told the nurse that that patient needed medical attention. That just seems insane to me in 2024 when I can call China right now that the deputy is leaving someone in physical crisis walking to another floor in the jail, which is actually a pain in the butt to do. You all remember that from your, your jail tours, leaving that person while they're suffering and just to talk to a nurse in person. Um, that's just incomprehensible to me that people would think that that is a good decision to engage in. Uh, the most of this is blacked out. 
Then we're at page eight where they have recommendations. And it's specifically policies regarding unconscious or semi-conscious persons, persons that you know are severely intoxicated, severely mentally ill, exhibiting obvious symptoms of alcohol, and that these jail deputies need retraining. So again, I know that a lot of this is targeted at adult correctional health, but the deputies are the ones seeing them daily and all the time. And just from the little that we know, this sounds like what Mr. Ash was talking about of just kind of reckless disregard or reckless indifference maybe for the fact that this person was dying in the moment. So please read what parts of the letters you can, because uh, it is moving. Um, most of the jail population are pretrial defendants, but that shouldn't even matter because a convicted murderer shouldn't die that way either in a just society. Um, so those are my comments. Commissioner Stoller made some good points there, but no one else on the commission directly addressed my comment but the chair of the commission did seem to indirectly respond to the multiple times I called for sheriff oversight during a very long discussion of what website the commission should use, sacksheriffreview.org, sacksheriffcrc.org, or sacksheriffoversight.org by saying this. On the potential names, I can tell you right now, sac sheriff oversight will never pass the supervisors. We just period. wanted to give you options. But, but that know. one's just not going to make it, period. Understood. Um, because they considered oversight in our name originally, and it's it's just not going to happen. We understand that. So we're really, it'll be the other two, as, and I really have no preference otherwise, but I just had to be clear on that because, and that was going to be my question, but you had answered it. This all has to go back to the supervisors. Hmm, now, I don't know why the chair of the commission thinks he knows that a majority of the Sacramento County Board of Supervisors would not accept the word oversight. That California law, the Brown Act, prevents a majority of the board from communicating on any business outside of public meetings, with a few exceptions, and I watched all the public meetings discussing this commission, including the May 4, 2021 meeting where they passed a resolution creating the commission that includes the word oversight, by the way, and at that May 4, 2021 meeting, one of the most right-wing pro-police supervisors, Sue Frost, said this. First, want to say that I am definitely in favor of an oversight committee. I, I, when it was initially suggested in the first rendition, I was so excited because I felt um, like I could support it. Huh. She didn't seem to oppose oversight. And also at that meeting, the primary author of the resolution, Supervisor Patrick Kennedy, also said this. This is not without precedent. Uh, in 19, I believe, 96, when the Sheriff's Oversight or Sheriff's Outreach Committee was formed, uh, if you look at the language that the, this board adopted, it actually gave the Sheriff's Over or Outreach Commission, um, committee, I believe, uh, it, it actually gave investigatory powers within the ordinance. So, I mean, we already have a body that has, that this board has adopted to give investiga investigatory powers to. So uh, this isn't, you know, a, a new concept by any means. Uh, sure, the subpoena is a little more, it's, it's more explicit in the language of this resolution, but it's, it's not unprecedented. Hmm, he didn't seem opposed to investigatory oversight powers. And the other supervisor who worked on the resolution, Phil Cerna, also said this. I, I just wanted to emphasize kind of the theme that uh, resonated with, uh, with me and that was uh, enunciated by a number of speakers about this uh, being the floor, not the ceiling. I, I couldn't agree more uh, that uh, should it be the will of the board that we pass uh, this resolution today um, that takes us um, uh, forward on, as, a, as a new kind of bold step to um, enhance transparency when it comes to the relationship between the sheriff's department uh, and the public and the board, that uh, we have a subsequent responsibility to make sure that all the resources, uh, budget included, are available to uh, ensure that this new commission with its uh, very uh, critical charge 
has what it needs to fulfill uh, the purpose that uh, we would be uh, basically endorsing with a, a uh, affirmation, uh, affirmative vote today. Hmm, again, that sounded like an expectation the commission would grow beyond the floor they were setting. And having watched that public meeting multiple times, I honestly think each supervisor had a little different concept of the resolution they passed, but there was definitely no explicit opposition to sheriff oversight, and, in fact, our local paper reported the outcome with the headline saying, Sacramento Sheriff's Office will be focus of new citizen oversight commission. So, given all that evidence, I was pretty frustrated the Sheriff Oversight Board, so many of us worked years to create, was so easily giving up on the idea of oversight. But I was also frustrated that they spent so little time focusing on these letters about the jail death crisis, while spending so much time interminably discussing what website name to use. So, not on behalf of the ACLU, but just as a concerned member of the community, I decided to actually buy the SACSheriffReview.org and the SACSheriffCRC.org websites and redirect them to the two letters about the jail death crisis they are ignoring. Now I have to decide if I should go back to the Community Review Commission on October 15th Tell them I took their websites and see if they will focus on providing SAC Sheriff oversight of our jail death crisis. But I want to know what you think. Should I go back to the Sacramento County Community Review Commission on October 15th and tell them I took their websites? And, like I asked in the title, will taking their websites get the Sheriff Oversight Commission to focus on the jail death crisis in Sacramento? I YouTube, you decide.